Today's opening of school classes nationwide has presented newly minted education chief secretary Sonny Angara with one among a multitude of overriding problems that need attention and resolutions, filling out the classroom backlog. Good evening, I am William Theo and this is PTV News Now. The Department of Education vows to work closely with the Department of Public Works and Highways to build more classrooms and fill out the backlog much quicker. Newly installed Dep Ed Chief Secretary Sani Angara admitted in an ambush interview this morning in Carmona National High School the validation process in the procurement is chiefly to blame for the extended delays in classroom construction and completion. The Dep Ed Chief is upbeat in straightening out the validation process by year end, so rush construction could begin in January next year. Angara said at least 159,000 classrooms need to be built this year at a rate of 12,000 annually and costing 2 million pesos each. Meanwhile, he added the funds for repairs to school buildings and classrooms damaged by Typhoon Karina are available. A few seconds of a warning air raid siren presaged the artillery strike. A smartphone video account documented the hit from afar that left 11 kids playing soccer in a field dead after the blast. It was the deadliest single-day hit on Israelis since October 7 last year that left a little over 1,200 Jews of all ages, genders and sizes dead after a murderous spree by Hamas fighters inside Israel. Despite denials from Hezbollah, the Iranian-backed and Lebanon-based militia, the Israeli government seconded by the U.S. State Department and the Pentagon, blames Hezbollah for this deadly and dastardly deed that many military analysts find odd. The Israeli Defense Forces have over the last couple of hours unleashed its series of retaliatory strikes deep into Lebanon territory, which we will bring to you once images are in. With exactly 100 days left before America heads out to voting centers and polling stations to choose their next leader, the race is heating up for the presidency between presumptive Democratic presidential bet Kamala Harris and Republican bet former President Donald J. Trump. And both camps have sharpened their attacks against each other as they seek to appeal to independents and those outside their bases. VOA's Veronica Balderas Iglesias fills us in with more. With the U.S. general election about 100 days away, Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump ramped up his attacks against Democratic presidential candidate and vice president Kamala Harris during a rally in St. Cloud, Minnesota. New fighter. We have a new victim now, Kamala. We have a new victim. We have a brand new victim. And honestly, she's a radical left lunatic. Harris fired back at Trump when campaigning in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. And you may have noticed Donald Trump has been resorting to some wild lies about my record and some of what he and his running mate are saying. Well, it's just plain weird. The Harris campaign says the former prosecutor has raised $200 million since President Joe Biden's endorsement and that 66 percent came from first-time donors. New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu, a Republican, expects the excitement around Harris's candidacy to wear off within 30 days. He advises the Trump J.D. Vance ticket to stick to the policies instead of resorting to personal attacks. Stick to what's driving anxiety. People have anxiety right now because they can't pay their bills. They have anxiety because they don't feel safe in their homes or in their communities. Those are the things that will drive them to go make a, a vote for Trump in November. Maryland Democratic governor Wes Moore says he believes Harris's vision for the future will help her win over undecided voters in key swing states. I think what people are saying now is we can finally have a conversation about the choice that people have in this election. That, that, that people see that it's not just that democracy is on the line. It's also the fact that basic values of how we think about economic freedoms are on the line. Harris is expected to announce her vice presidential pick before the Democratic National Convention scheduled for August in Chicago.
political science professor June Spigman, who also is a Rhode Island state legislator, says candidates usually choose running mates that can balance the ticket. Geographically is often the way it's done. She's from the West Coast, so let's choose someone from the Midwest who can bring votes that she might not otherwise get. Um, Trump balanced the ticket with someone who was much younger than he was. Harris has a busy week ahead with a scheduled campaign stop in Atlanta, Georgia. The Trump ticket will also hold campaign events in Pennsylvania, Nevada and Arizona in the coming days, according to their website. Veronica Valderas Iglesias, VOA News, Washington. And that is a wrap for this afternoon. Join us anew later this evening for yet another set of breaking news stories. Stay connected by catching the news right here. This is William Theo, and thank you for watching PTV News Now.